Hey! Have you been looking for a way of making insane amounts of gold? Have you been looking for farms to build where you don't even need to think about what you're even doing? Have you been looking for a way to use up all of your obsidian suppliers? Well then, stay tuned, because I have the farm for you. The output of this farm comes up to 40,000 gold ingots per hour, which consists out of 288,000 gold nuggets, which you will first need to craft, and another 8,000 gold ingots. As you can see, this is a two-dimensional farm, which will require two players to run it, meaning that it can only be used on either multiplayer servers or on a single-player world when you use the carpet mod to spawn in bots. Now let's go further into detail in how this farm actually works. And to be fair, it's not really this interesting. It's actually pretty simple in terms of how it functions. It's just way too overpowered. Now if we take a look at the nether side, you can see there's not that much going on. Yep. It's a bit of an oversight that Mojang still left it in the game that mobs can just spawn in portals. And if they do, they get immediately sent to the overworld position. So that's just what we use because it's the easiest way. <laughs> now we did make some modifications. We added a bit of a roof so that we get more pack spawn attempts. If you don't know much about mob spawning and don't know what pack spawn attempts are, go check out the video series by Logical Geek Boy called Dissecting Minecraft. There he had two videos with methods where he talked about mob spawning and I highly recommend that you check that out. Apart from the roof, we just did one more modification. We, as you can see, offset the portals. We did that to prevent ghast and magma cube spawning because we're currently in another waste biome which we require to only have the possibility of ghasts, zombified piglins, magma cubes and eminent piglin spawning. By having the offset of the portals, we stop the ghasts and the magma cubes from spawning because they would intersect with a block, with a hitbox, and that means that they can't spawn. The endermen already don't spawn because of the light level, and that only leaves us with zombified piglins and regular piglins. And those can get handled by the farm. So. Yeah, that's why we offset the portals. If we take a look at the chunk grid, we can see that this portal cube is in a 2x2 chunk area, where it's just slightly offset because we have a center block. So here one side sticks out, but that's fine. Since there are no mobs spawning in that, they won't teleport to a wrong position. In terms of height, we just have 24 portals stacked on top of each other, and then 32 slices of those to fill up the 2x2 chunk area. The AFK spot is exactly in the center of the farm at Y254, so the player position is at 255. If we take a look at the ranges, um, which is a feature of Mini Hut, if you don't know what Mini Hut is, definitely go check it out. It's a great mod by Masa, which in this case can show us the different type of spheres. So we have the big despawn sphere and we have the can despawn sphere. Outside of this sphere, no mob spawning will happen. Well, basically it can, but mobs instantly despawn. Now the can despawn sphere basically shows in which area mobs will never despawn. If mobs spawn inside of this sphere, they will not despawn randomly. And there are a few cases where we want to make sure that mobs can despawn. Here for example, we do have a chicken jockey and since he will not go through the portal, we want to make sure that he doesn't stay there forever. So that's why he is outside of the can despawn sphere. So over time he will just despawn and the spawning spaces will not be taken up anymore. One more thing that can happen is that piglins can transform into zombified piglins and upon transforming they will go through the portal again since they don't have the cooldown anymore. Once they have transformed they will end up back here on the nether side. You can see here this one has a crossbow so you definitely know this was not a failed teleport attempt, this was a piglin that just went back through the overworld. But since we're nowhere near the mob cap we don't need to be worried about those taking up spaces in the mob cap. On the overworld side, the pigmen either get attracted by the turtle eggs or they just get pushed out by the other mobs. At the bottom, we just have one player swinging at an armor stand, which then applies the sweeping edge effect to the mobs inside of the small chamber. Any items that get dropped then get pushed over by the carpet. XP can go through the lava if it can get picked up by the player. If the player cannot pick up any more XP, it will just get burned. And all of the items just go into this bubble column and into all of our box loaders that we have to deal with the crazy amount of gold nuggets. In terms of box loaders, I just went with a simple box loader, which is a slightly modified version of Samus the Sage's box loader. And it has some safety features. For example, if a slice runs out of shulker boxes, 
it locks itself up. And if you run out of storage space, we just have an OR gate here, which then retracts the packed ice block so that the items just get burned and don't get stored anymore, because we don't want to lose any shulker boxes full of items. And we just have a beacon here to then supply the player with regeneration so that he doesn't die due to starving. We also give him some strength, but that's not really needed because all you need is sweeping edge 3 and looting 3 to get the raids, um, because they are already at only one hit point after the drop. To run the farm, you just get your friend to go to the AFK spot in the nether, or you spawn a bot. Then you take your sword, and then you just stand on the pressure plate, align yourself against the back of the fence, and then you can just start swiping at the armor stand. If we have a tool like Tweakeroo, you can use the auto clicker in it to swing every 11 game ticks. That's the best frequency to use to get the most items. Or if you run carpet mod, you can just do player, your name, attack interval 11. And you will also automatically swing at the armor stand. To stop, you can just type player stop. Now you want to make sure that you build this farm in the nether waste biome. To ensure that you can either use the F3 screen, you can verify it using chunk base or admitst, or I like to use voxel map which gives me a small minimap in the top right corner of the screen. To get the correct position of the overworld side, you want to take the center of the farm which is also conveniently the AFK spot and note down the X and Z position, which in this case is 224 and negative 128. Then you just multiply those numbers by eight, which in this case leave me with 1792 and negative 1024, and I build it at Y128. And yeah, that's basically all you need to know for the positioning of the farm. So there we have it, a portal farm which is way too OP in my humble opinion. But what are your thoughts? Leave a comment to tell me if you think that portal farms like those should be nerfed in this game. If you want to play around with it yourself, there's a world download and lightmatic in the description. If you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe, and also check me out on Twitch. I'm mostly active there, and there you will see more crazy farms just like this. Until then, I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. Bye!